Hello, my name is Chris and I live in Las Vegas. I'm an ex-evangelical Christian and after I left that evangelical church, I went to explore different religions and different ways of life, alternative ways of life. Um, and this is one of those stories. I was once booted from a vampire cult and this is how it all began. Now, in my late 20s, I had uh, started to explore different religions and different ways of uh, living, alternative ways of living um, in Las Vegas. And you wouldn't think of it, but other than being a gambling town with strippers and slot machines and crab tables and um, all the glittering lights, Las Vegas has the supernatural underground. Um, in regards to that underground, there are covens, there are cults. There are people who get together under the cover of night to um, practice, practice their religion or to share their spiritual beliefs. And one of these cults that I found myself in was a vampire cult. And this was my first cult. About, uh, I don't know, maybe half a decade after I stopped going to Christian church, um, I had run into a friend of mine who was also into the occult who had studied uh, the ancient practices and, um, you know, more or less tried different ceremonies to see if they had worked for them. Well, they were involved into vamp in a vampire cult and invited me to go attend. Now, what was this vampire cult like and what was it called? It was called the House of Mayotte. And the funny thing about all the cults in Las Vegas is they go by houses they go by different names and they're all classified by what kind of gatherings they are. Now there's a lot of witchcraft cults in Las Vegas. Um, one of the greater known ones is the House of Isis or the Temple of Isis. They have a temple and a um, ceremony center. It's like a big outdoor semicircle out in the middle of the desert, out on the outskirts of Las Vegas where you could rent um, their space and their temple for rituals or parties or what have you. Um, that's the Temple of Isis. There are a couple of other ones. There was a bookstore called Bell Book and Candle that had their own witchcraft school. Um, but also there are a lot of little offshoot covens, uh, smaller clubs basically that get together in homes and um, they fellowship in that way. And that's the kind of uh, cult I was in. It was called the House of Mayotte, and it was a cult for the kinfolk and people who identify as vampires and who live the vampire lifestyle. Now, I myself do not identify as a vampire, and I've never lived the vampire lifestyle. I've only just been very curious in alternative lifestyles, and I wanted to see how it all went and how it all goes. And in no way do I believe that I am a kinfolk. Now, what is a kinfolk? There is a group, a category of occult people in Las Vegas, and I'm sure nationwide or worldwide, who believe that they are kinfolk. They believe that they have supernatural spirits that have been reborn in human bodies. So they would identify as a kin. Let's say I identify as a werewolf a wolf spirit, but born in a human body. So I would be a wolfkin. If there was a person who identifies as a fairy, on the deep down inside, they feel like they are a fairy, but they are born into a human body, they would be a fairy kin. Now, there's a whole bunch of different kinds of um, categories for people who believe that they have an inhuman spirit born in a human body, I myself believe that I have a human spirit born in a human body. And again, <clears throat> this was all in pursuit of my curiosities in the occult. So, Friday nights, about 15 to 20 years ago, I was going to this cult called the House of Mayotte. And basically what it consists of, it was a house fellowship headed by a high priestess who lived as a vampire queen and she had servants underneath her and it was all very organized as in only certain people could speak at a time they all got together in a very hippie-esque way on a friday night they'd all hang out in a giant living room 
sit around in a giant circle and talk about their supernatural experiences, or they would uh, practice the occult, um, ghost hunting or psychic powers or, or what have you. Now, this is what you do when you hang out with psychic people. You do psychic things. So, <laughs> I would attend this uh, vampire club for several months before I started to notice things in the vampire cult that bugged me a lot. Um, there is a big, there's a huge number of homeless population in Las Vegas and a big number of the homeless happen to be teenage children. So I noticed that there were teenage gothic children going to this vampire cult and basically under the tutelage of this vampire priestess for basically her servants. The vampire priestess was taking in whew, teenage runaways as her servants and that really freaking bothered me. I made a lot of fun when I was going at this cult because I thought it was very silly at the time that human beings were identifying as inhuman creatures, but as well as I'm a believer in the constitution and I happen to be a military brat, I grew up with the idea that, you know what, we do live in the land of the free. We have the freedom of religion. We have the freedom of assembly and they weren't breaking any rules or infringing on any body's rights except maybe the rights of the homeless kids. So that's what really bugged me whenever, since working, <laughs> since being involved in the occult afterwards, I had gone to um, medical school and I've worked for nonprofits and I worked for a nonprofit that took care of um, teenage kids without insurance. Now, my heart goes out to the homeless. My heart goes out to teenagers who have no insurance, who need guidance and who need to counseling and who need to know their rights. Um, even before all that, when I had noticed this in this cult, in this vampire cult, I had noticed that there was something wrong with that, that she was taking advantage of teenage runaways. And they were living at her house, they were cleaning her house, and you, I would like, it would, it's pretty to say on the surface, well, she's providing a home to these kids who were maybe thrown out of their homes for being alternative, for being gay, for being, for identifying as something that their parents didn't like. Be that what it may, there are organizations um, that are flawed, but that are geared to help kids in need. And, um, Working for a vampire queen, I would not suggest. So months into attending this uh, cult, I decided to test the boundaries of this cult to see exactly how much superstition and how much dissension could be, could be utilized to bring the cult down because I didn't really like how the homeless kids were being treated in this cult. So... Basically, my friend who invited me in the cult, and by the way, I'm not very proud of this story. This is the first cult I ever joined. And afterwards, when I had joined other covens and cults, just to see how those went, I was very nice and I was very respectful. But this being my first cult, I wasn't very nice. I wasn't very respectful. I was young. I was proud. I was just out of the Christian religion. And I would studied the occult for years, so I figured, you know, this was just another, like, wacko group. Which it was, but at the same time as I could have shown better manners. Um, especially for the adults that were in the group, who still identified as supernatural creatures. But my heart had gone out to the kids who were basically the servants of a vampire queen. So, um, where was I? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I wanted to see exactly how much superstition and exactly how much dissension I could stir up in this group just because I wanted to see if I could break up this group because they were using these kids in this way. So my friend um, who invited me in this group, and the only reason I'm bringing this up because I still have repercussions of this to this day, um, and take in mind, take, keep in mind, this is 15 to 20 years ago. so. My friend who was in this group was going to the group one Friday night and I decided to not go. And he just so happened to have a, a giant crystal in the shape of a stake 
And, you know, we're, we're friends. We watched a lot of, like, goofy TV together. I'm a big fan of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. That was a big reason why I joined this vampire group as a joke, as a gag, because I liked that show. So he was going to go to the group that night and show them his um, steak, this crystal in the shape of a steak. And we joked about Buffy the Vampire Slayer before he was going to go. So me being the pot store that I was at that time, I called the Vampire Queen on the phone and I was like, yeah, um, we just watched Buffy the Vampire Slayer and uh, my friend Paul is on his way to you with a crystal steak. Just be careful. And then I just ended the phone call like that. And um, basically I did not say he was coming to attack them. They assumed that when he showed up. When he showed up, they were very predatory. They were very rude. They were very, um, basically they were paranoid as hell all over my friend. And all he wanted to do was show them like a crystal in the shape of a stake. He wasn't going to go kill them. And immediately afterwards, she calls me back up, screaming her freaking head off that I'm out of the group because I said he was coming to kill them. And I told her that I didn't say that, you assume that. But it, it, again, it was me just testing the boundaries of exactly how superstitious and paranoid this uh, vampire high priestess was. So I was in this group for a good two months, two, three months before I had done this stunt, just to test the boundaries of their paranoia. So I was in this group for a while. I had a copy of their constitution. So, because I was still upset about the homeless kids, and I was petty, I uh, basically went to the media. I brought a copy of their constitution and their doctrinal statement to um, a, uh, an investigative reporter that works for, I believe, News 8 now. Um, his name is George Knapp. Basically, this guy has studied cults, and he's studied UFOs since the 1980s. He's a award-winning journalist who I, I believe works for our local News 8 affiliate. But basically, I had made up a dossier of their constitution and I wrote a nice letter and an outline about, hi, this is who I am, I joined this vampire cult. They've got homeless kids um, in this vampire cult. Please do, it, please do a story. And then I basically gave all the paperwork and documentation I had on the vampire cult to the journalist. So I left it at that. I was like, this journalist, he's, he'll do a good job. At least he'll do an investigation. Even if it goes nowhere, it might rattle them. So it turns out the journalist took the whole story seriously. Um, he didn't do an expose story. I don't think it was a news story, like a local news story, like worthy of that. But he did call the police. And the police did a full investigation on the address of the house, on the lady, on the vampire queen lady, on the runaways that lived at her house. So more or less, it broke up the entire cult of the house of Mayotte. Now, what is the house of Mayotte? Mayotte is an Egyptian goddess. She's the Egyptian goddess of law. And if you look up online the laws of Mayotte, it's very much like the laws of Hammurabi. It's a list of commandments, just very much like the Ten Commandments in the Bible. But I believe Mayotte's commandments are 24. But the idea of Mayotte being the goddess of justice and for justice in Las Vegas to break up the house of Mayotte, um, to me, was, was, was justice. Was, was Mayotte coming home to her, uh, to her cult, but not at their aid? at their dismay. So what happened afterwards, uh, my friend who I put in that shitty situation, we continued to be friends years afterwards, but we're no longer friends now. And it really makes me sad because um, every time I see this person in public, I don't know if they like me or hate me. So I pretty much kind of like keep my distance. Same deal, this friend who I um, 
called the vampire cult and told them that he's coming over with the stake. Just be careful. To this day, um, he did later forgive me of being a jerk like that and putting him in that awkward situation. I don't know if I've ever really forgiven myself for being so petty and being such a jerk. Um, and keep in mind, this was 20 years ago, but I still don't really forgive myself for it. When you do bad things, um, I believe that you should hold yourself accountable, no matter how long, how long of a time has passed. So even to this day, this guy who is in the vampire cult, he still calls me. He still calls me from blocked numbers. He's, I don't know if he wants to be friends. I don't know if he wants to be my foe, but it really bugs me. And the funny thing is like, uh, I deliver pizza and that guy's like area <laughs> and he's never once called my pizza place for a pizza, which is probably kind of smart because he'd probably have to give up his number and his address. <laughs> but the dude calls me, he harasses me online. He'll send me text messages super late at night with occult stuff. And, um, I guess my point in telling these occult stories is that it's dangerous. It's dangerous being around people who are in a cult. It's dangerous being around people who have accepted the supernatural as real because there's a very real paranoia to it. Now, I've studied the supernatural. I've studied and I've studied human beings who believe in the supernatural. Um, and I feel that it's just better to live a, a regular, normal life, to use science and deductive reasoning, rather than depending upon your intuition and the occult every day. Um, I love the paranormal. I love the idea of using science to document what people feel are supernatural experiences, and maybe someday in the future we'll be able to understand them. But to that extent, I believe that the supernatural will always be an unknown and um, a phenomenon that has been with human beings, you know, since recorded history. Um, as far as the House of Mayotte and the investigation, it destroyed the cult. The cult's like over. It was like, uh, fell apart, basically, um, after the police investigation. Um, the lady who ran the house in Mayon, interestingly enough, got a TV show on Lifetime. <laughs> There's a show called Women of the Occult that ran on Lifetime. And the high priestess of the vampire cult was featured on it. So if you look up, I believe it's on YouTube, uh, Secrets of the Occult or Women of the Occult, you will find that episode of the, the vampire lady in Las Vegas. That was her cult, the House of Mayant. So I hope everybody is happy and healthy out there. And I hope you watch your back and you use your smarts and your common sense and your deductive reasoning. I hope that you avoid, avoid cults at all costs if you can and try to be as friendly and as kind as possible to everyone out there. Hugs, health, happiness from Las Vegas.